Many of us dream about escaping the stress of city life to live a life of solitude with our loved ones, but this romanticized daydream can quickly become a nightmare. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we are exploring New London Ledge Lighthouse off the coast of Connecticut. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. In the late 1800s, there was a lack of lighthouses to warn ships of hazardous conditions. Off the coast of Connecticut, dozens of ships were wrecking, causing unnecessary loss of life and interruptions to trade as entire payloads were lost to the sea. Politicians in Connecticut had had enough tragedy, so they began requesting money from Congress to build more lighthouses. Congress turned down the state 10 times. Then, on the 11th time that they requested, $115,000, the modern equivalent of nearly $4 million, was approved to build a new lighthouse. After years of planning, the new London Ledge Lighthouse was constructed in 1909. Above its three-foot-thick concrete wall foundation, a modest but charming three-story Second Empire-style residence was constructed from granite blocks. Shining above the mansard roof, the fog signals apparatus housed a fourth-order Fresnel lens, emitting three flashes of white light followed by one flash of red light. This state-of-the-art lighthouse was now ready to house a headkeeper. As the years went by, the lighthouse saved lives and helped the economy run smoothly as ships safely made their way to port, but the lighthouse would claim one life for itself. Ernie and his wife sought to escape the hustle and bustle of the mainland and claim a romantic escape, becoming keepers of the lighthouse. All was fine in the beginning, but his wife quickly grew bored. The lighthouse, surrounded by rough waters, isolated her from friends and family. While the idea of leaving the world behind had started as a quest for freedom and independence, it had quickly spiraled into a depressing prison. One day, a ship captain visited and she began flirting with him, convincing him to take her away on his boat. When Ernie came down from his post, he discovered that she had boarded the captain's vessel and left for good. Feeling betrayed, he made his way up the stairs and through the empty house. The only sounds he could hear were the breaking of waves and the loud roar of the engine room, gently shaking the floorboards. The house that was once full of laughter was now desolate. From what the authorities put together, Ernie made his way to the top of the tower to guard his post one last time. Then, when morning came, he stepped onto the roof and threw himself to the waves. By nightfall, the townsfolk noticed the light had gone out and sent a crew to check in on the young couple, but no one was to be found. Several more headkeepers were assigned the new London Lighthouse post, but none of them served for long as it was just too isolated. Eventually, in 1939, the United States Coast Guard assumed responsibility for maintaining the lighthouse. At this time, the Coast Guard crew began recording strange happenings in their journals and reporting odd occurrences to their superiors. Most of them reported loud knocking sounds and devices turning on and off by themselves. While some believed it was haunted by the ghost of Ernie, others attributed the phenomena to outdated wiring and a failing foundation causing the house to make strange banging sounds. Either way, this drove the crew mad. They could not be more relieved to learn that the lighthouse would be automated. One of those crew members, by the name of William Grace, wrote a poem on his last night spent in the lighthouse. Rock of slow torture, Ernie's domain, hell on earth, May New London Ledge's light shine on forever because I'm through. I'll watch it from afar while drinking a brew. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to say a very special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on this screen and contribute in part to the production of these videos, join our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.